In this video, I'm going to teach you the ultimate. <laughs> All right, just stick around for dividend discount model stuff. The dividend discount model is actually a really easy concept to understand if we break it down simply. So let's get started with the definition. The dividend discount model predicts the price of a company's stock based on the sum of the present value of its expected dividends. Now, when we're talking about the price of the stock, we're trying to determine its value and see how that value is above or below or equal to the price of the stock in the marketplace. Now, let's start off with a timeline. You see T equals zero, that just means time equals zero. So this point on this timeline represents today. Let's say we're analyzing a stock that we expect to pay $8 dividend at the end of year one, a $10 dividend at the end of year two, a $6 dividend at the end of year three, and a $12 dividend at the end of year four. But we also expect this stock's price to be $100 at the end of year four. So the cash flow at the end of year four will be 12 plus 100. What we wanna know with the dividend discount model is if we discount all of these values, all four of them, back to the starting point of today, what should the fair price of this stock be? Let's pretend in this example that the market is pricing this hypothetical stock at $100 today. We want to find out if this is a good stock to purchase. We're going to have to make an assumption about the required rate of return of this stock. And so this will be based on the risk of the stock. In most dividend discount model problems I've seen, they give you this, va this value. So we're going to assume that based on the risk of the stock, we need a return of at least 8%. We'll use this formula, the dividend discount model formula, to find the price or the intrinsic value that we believe this stock should be priced at. And we're just going to take the dividend, so D1 is the dividend at time 1, and we're going to divide it by 1 plus the required rate of return of 8%, and then put it to the value of the exponent of 1, which is this time period. And then we'll do the same thing for dividend 2, D2, which is this $10 here, and we'll do 1 plus the required rate of return of 8%, to the power of two because that is the point in the timeline that it represents. And we'll just do that all the way through to the ending value. But the last period of time is a bit different because we do have the dividend at time four, which is the $12 here, but we also add the price of the stock at time four that we expect, which is that $100. And we discount them all back. So here is what this looks like. So we talked about the first dividend of $8 being discounted back by 1.08 to the power of one, the time period. That results in a present value of $7.41. The second dividend was $10 and we discounted it back for two years. That results in a present value of $8.57. And we do that for the third cash flow and the fourth cash flow. When we discount all four of these cash flows back to present value, so today, we come up with an intrinsic value or an expected price of $103.47. Now this $103.47 is higher than what the market is currently pricing the stock at of $100, which means that this stock is definitely a buy based on the dividend discount model. Now that we've got the concept down on pen and pad, let's go over to Excel and actually try to implement the dividend discount model to value Intel stock. And we're going to be using actual real quarterly dividend information. And I got all of this information by going to Yahoo Finance, typing in INTC, going to the historical data tab, and then changing this to dividends only and selecting the time range that I'm interested in. And then I just took all of these dividends for each of these dates and put them into Excel. So now we have the quarterly dividends for the last um, eight years for Intel. And we want to annualize these. So we'll just take the value of each quarterly dividend and multiply it by four. And then I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard and paste it, uh, paste the formulas all the way down. And then we need to find what's the growth rate of the dividends for each year. So we'll just take the price of each or the annual dividends for each year, subtract the annual dividends from the previous year, and then divide by the annual dividends of the previous year. And this gives us the growth rate for that year. And then we can paste the 
formula all the way to the second last one. And now you can see we actually have eight years of, of growth rates. And in order to find the price using the dividend discount uh, model, we need to find a growth rate to use in the model. And for this one, we'll just use the average growth rate over the last eight years. And we'll just be making the assumption that the dividends will grow at the same rate as they have in the past. Okay, I mean, it's a, it's a big assumption, but that's one we're going to go with for now. And then we need to use a required rate of return based on what our assessment is for the risk of the company. And we can just start off by saying, let's go with 9%, but in, you know, in a real valuation, you would want to put a lot more thought into the required rate of return. Um, and then we'll put in the actual price of this stock, which is at this time is about $45.71. Now to calculate the price using the dividend discount model, we'll just use this formula right here which equals the dividend for next year. And since I'm doing this towards the start of 22, the dividends that are expected to be paid out in 2022 are this $1.46 value. Then we'll divide by the, the required return, which is this R value, subtracted by the growth. And this gives us a uh, price of $53.07. And we can say that if this price is uh, greater than this price, the actual price, then this is an undervalued stock that we're interested in purchasing. If not, then it's overvalued. And so now we'll see we have a green undervalued mark, but what if we change this required rate of return to 10%? We say this is actually more risky than we initially thought. Now the dividend discount price is $38.92, which is less than this actual price. But one thing that we could actually use this model for is to find out what do the investors in the market actually require for a return. So what, would, what could we make the required return that would make the actual price equal the dividend discount model price? So to do that, we can go to data and then solver, and then we'll just grab this value here, the dividend discount price, and we wanna say that we want a value of 45.71 because that's the value of the actual price. And we're gonna achieve that value by changing the required rate of return, which is in cell H3. So if we hit solve, okay, then we find that a required rate of return of 9.443% is the actual required rate of return that makes this dividend discount model price equal to the actual price. And so this might actually be closer to the required rate of return that real investors in the actual stock market are requiring when they purchase Intel Corporation. Uh, if you'd like to play around with the spreadsheet, click the automatic download link in the description. And I really appreciate you watching this video and please drop a like on it so we can get some of the YouTube algorithm juice going and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you for watching.